Have you ever pondered the significance of understanding the code of civil procedure? This question might seem daunting, but the answer is simpler than you think. The Code of Civil Procedure, or CPC, is a legal compass that guides law professionals and students through the labyrinth of civil suits. The CPC is a beacon of clarity in the otherwise murky waters of civil law. It helps us navigate through the complexities of legal procedures, providing a systematic approach to handle civil cases. It's like a recipe book for a chef. Just as a chef uses a recipe to prepare a dish step by step, a lawyer uses the code to understand how to proceed with a case, from filing a suit to executing a decree. Now, imagine you're a law student. You're studying late into the night, trying to wrap your head around the intricate details of civil suits. Suddenly, you come across a complex case. You're stumped. But then, you remember your trusty guide, the Code of Civil Procedure. You flip open the book, and there it is. The exact procedure you need to follow to understand this case. It's like a ray of hope in the dark night of confusion. Or picture yourself as a practicing lawyer. You're handling a complex civil case. The stakes are high. The pressure is on. And then, there's a twist in the case. A new development that throws you off. You're unsure about the next step, but you don't panic. You turn to the Code of Civil Procedure. It helps you understand your next move, the legal procedures you need to follow. It's your lifeline in the stormy sea of legal challenges. The Code of Civil Procedure is not just a book of rules. It's a tool for law students to learn, for lawyers to practice, and for judges to adjudicate. It's a guide to understanding the legal procedures involved in civil suits. It's a roadmap to justice. Now let's delve into the specifics of Order 6 of the Code of Civil Procedure. The first rule of Order 6 defines what a pleading is. This rule is quite straightforward, simply stating that a pleading can either be a plaint or a written statement. Now you might be wondering, what exactly are these? A plaint is a formal statement of the facts and claims that form the basis of a lawsuit. On the other hand, a written statement is a document filed by the defendant in response to the plaintiff's plaint, presenting the defendant's version of facts and his claims or defences, if any. Moving on to Rule 2 of Order 6, we find a key element in the structure of a civil suit. This rule outlines the critical requirement that every pleading must contain and contain only a statement in a concise form of the material facts on which the party pleading is basing their claim or defence. This is an essential rule as it ensures that the case is presented in a clear and straightforward manner. It eliminates the possibility of confusing or tangential information clouding the central issues of the case. The importance of this rule cannot be overstated. In the realm of civil law, the ability to present a concise, coherent statement of the material facts is paramount it provides a clear roadmap of the case for the court, enabling it to understand the crux of the matter more easily. Moreover, it helps each party understand the other's standpoint and prepare their arguments accordingly. However, it's crucial to understand that this rule doesn't require every minute detail to be fleshed out in the pleadings. Only the material facts, the key points that are relevant to the case, need to be stated. This prevents the pleadings from becoming overly lengthy and convoluted and keeps the focus where it should be, on the facts that truly matter. And so, with the first and second rules of Order 6, the groundwork for a civil suit is set. The stage is prepared for the parties to present their cases, armed with a clear understanding of what needs to be included in their pleadings and the importance of a concise statement of the material facts. Rule 3 and 4 of Order 6 establish the structure of pleadings. Moving forward, let's delve into the specifics of these two rules. Rule 3 of Order 6 revolves around the forms that are used for pleadings. Now, these forms can be found in Appendix A, and the rule stipulates that they should be used when applicable. But what if they're not applicable? Well, in that case, forms of a similar character, as close as possible, should be employed. This ensures a degree of uniformity and consistency in the pleadings submitted, making them easier to read, understand and evaluate. Now let's shift our focus to Rule 4 of Order 6. This rule is particularly interesting as it delves into the nitty-gritty of pleadings in cases that involve, let's say, a bit more complexity. We're talking about scenarios that involve misrepresentation, fraud, breach of trust, willful default or undue influence. In these cases, and in others where more details are necessary, Rule 4 steps in to ensure clarity. 
This rule mandates that particulars, including dates and items if necessary, should be explicitly stated in the pleading. What does this mean? It means that if you're relying on any of the aforementioned issues in your claim or defence, you need to provide a detailed narrative. You can't just say, there was fraud. You need to lay out the particulars, when it happened, how it happened, who was involved, and so on. You get the picture. The beauty of Rules 3 and 4 of Order 6 is that they work in tandem to create a comprehensive and precise framework for pleadings. Rule 3 sets the stage with the form, and Rule 4 fills that form with specific detailed content where necessary. Together, they ensure that the pleadings aren't just a collection of broad, vague statements, but rather they are clear, concise and precise narratives that effectively communicate the claim or defence. These rules ensure clarity and precision in pleadings. Rule 17 of Order 6 allows for alterations and amendments. Let's delve a little deeper into this. This rule is like a safety net in the legal world, providing a chance for either party to modify their pleadings at any stage of the proceedings. It's a rule that acknowledges the fact that circumstances can change, new information can come to light, or perhaps something was simply overlooked in the initial stages. The court, in its wisdom, reserves the right to grant this allowance, but it does so under the umbrella of justice. The terms of these alterations or amendments are such that they must be just. This means that the changes should not cause an injustice to the other party, or disrupt the course of the proceedings in an unfair way. For instance, imagine a scenario where a defendant realises halfway through the trial that there was a key piece of evidence or a crucial fact they failed to include in their original pleadings. Rule 17 of Order 6 would allow them to amend their pleadings to include this new information. However, this would only be permitted if it doesn't unfairly disadvantage the plaintiff or cause undue delay to the proceedings. The rule forms a cornerstone of the legal system, upholding the principles of fairness and justice. It acknowledges that humans can make errors and it provides a provision to correct those errors within the framework of the court proceedings. It's important to note that while this rule provides a significant level of flexibility, it is not a free pass to make changes on a whim. The court exercises discretion in allowing these amendments and always weighs the interest of justice in its decision. In essence, Rule 17 of Order 6 is a testament to the adaptability and fluidity of the legal system. It underscores the fact that court proceedings are not set in stone and can be adjusted to ensure that justice is served. This rule provides flexibility and fairness to both parties in a civil suit. We've covered a lot of ground today. Order 6 of the Code of Civil Procedure, or CPC, is a cornerstone of civil litigation. It guides us on how pleadings should be prepared and presented in a court of law, setting the rules of engagement. We began our journey with Rules 1 and 2. Rule 1 reminds us that a pleading can either be a plaint or a written statement. Rule 2 goes a step further, requiring that these pleadings contain only the material facts that the party relies on for their claim or defence presented in a concise form. It's a call for clarity and precision, a principle that underpins the entire legal process. Next, we delved into Rules 3 and 4. Rule 3 provides us with the forms in Appendix A, a toolkit for crafting our pleadings. If these forms are not applicable, we must use forms of a similar character. Rule 4, on the other hand, deals with the specifics. It requires us to state particulars in cases where we rely on misrepresentation, fraud, breach of trust, willful default or undue influence. It's a rule that insists on thoroughness, leaving no room for ambiguity. Lastly, we explored Rule 17, a rule that allows flexibility in the system. It empowers the court to allow either party to alter or amend their pleadings at any stage of the proceedings. This rule acknowledges that circumstances can change and our legal system must be responsive to these changes. Related to Order 6, we also touched upon various sections of the CPC. These sections provide general principles of jurisdiction, detailing where suits should be instituted, the power to transfer suits, and when a foreign judgment is not conclusive, among others. These sections, in combination with Order 6, provide a holistic view of the civil procedure. In essence, Order 6 and the related sections of the CPC are not just rules or sections in a statute, they are the guiding principles that ensure fairness, clarity and justice in civil litigation. 
Understanding these rules can help you navigate the complex terrain of civil suits with ease and confidence.